Here in Fusion 360, I have a model of a box that I want to cut out on a laser cutter. It has tabs that will allow each piece to interlock. I want to lay this flat so I can generate tool paths that take into account the kerf of the laser. I also want to be able to modify my design and then have those tool paths update automatically. So how can I do that? The first thing to do is go to the top level of my assembly. And we want to make sure that each of our pieces are in their own component. This is good practice in Fusion 360, and it's also known as rule number one. At the top level component, we want to create a new component. We can call this component laser cut. Inside laser cut, let's create a new component. You can do this by right clicking on the laser cut component and clicking new component. Call this component plywood. Inside plywood, we want to create a sketch. It's best to do that on the ground plane in your particular model. Once we're here, let's create a rectangle. We want to create this rectangle the size of the piece of material that you're using. In my case, I have a 12 inch tab, 12 inch piece of plywood. We want to place this somewhere relative to the origin, so go ahead and dimension that. Now that we have it dimensioned, we can finish our sketch. Now we can press E to make an extrude and type in ply. This is a user parameter that I've set up in the Modify Parameters menu. I have ply set to 0.125 inches. Now, shift click all of the original components. Once you have them all highlighted, right click, copy. Then, left click on your new laser cut assembly. Then, right click and click paste. You don't want to paste new, we want to click paste so our pieces will update. Then move the new copy out to the side and press OK. Now we will create joints inside our laser cut assembly. It's important to activate that assembly. You can press J on your keyboard or click joint under assemble. You want to click in the middle of the piece that you want to lay flat. Then click on the plywood. You can look at the top view and then you can arrange it where you want it. You can also arrange these later or rotate them. Let's do that again for the next piece. Press J, then click. We can rotate. And then place it in position. It matters which side that you click on. If you have etching on this side, you don't want to click your joint on that side. You want to click on the side that you want to have touch the plywood. And these joints are editable, so you can change your offsets based on your design and what you need. I usually just click all the joints very quickly, get them down on the plywood. Then I consider how I want to lay out the pieces for a good, efficient use of materials. And then finally, let's press J one more time and click the base. So now we have all our parts laid out and we can go into the manufacturer workspace and create tool paths. The benefit of using a copy like this is we can go back and make relatively major changes to our design and all these pieces will update on our layout. For example, if I modify the user parameter for the height of the box, and I change this from 50 millimeters to 70 millimeters, all of my pieces instantly update. Now they are all larger and they have the same parameters. I can also update the plywood thickness and this will update all the tab dimensions. If I measure with my calipers that my plywood is actually 0.121 inches, I can update that parameter and then all these tabs are now perfectly sized. So this is a great way to lay out your pieces for a laser cut and then put them in a DXF file for output.